This morning, thanks to God, we're going to begin talking about something or sharing with you, amen, how the Holy Spirit has begun to deal with me to take the church, amen, into this new year of 2020. And I hear the Holy Ghost telling me to tell Universal Faith Church, I can't speak, amen, to another pastor in their congregation, but to this one, amen. I hear the Holy Ghost saying that this church must get drunk. We are too sober. We, 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 we got to get drunk, amen. We, we do, we're too much in control of ourselves. We're too much in control of our lives. He's all right. In, but I hear the Holy Ghost telling me to tell you, you got to get drunk. He's all right. In, <laughs> amen. And when I said that word drunk, then, uh, amen, a, a favorite uh, 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 a speaker of mine, I, I listened to Les Brown in, when he was telling amen Roscoe, I believe it was, he said, drink, Roscoe, drink. He's all right, isn't it? When he, amen. But anyway, saints of God, and you that are with me, amen, you, 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 you're you too sober. You got to get drunk. And then, amen, I'm talking about a specific type of drunk here. You see, I believe that there's, there's eight fine wines that God has. In order to be fully drunk in the Holy Ghost, you must drink of these eight wines. And I want to talk about one of these wines this morning. He's all right in, you know, being drunk, amen, with this new wine. I'm not, I'm not talking about that old wine that we used to have, but this new wine. He's all right in me. And this wine come, amen, through and by the Holy Ghost. Think about Jesus, amen, at the wedding feast, amen. And they came to him and said, Master, they run out of wine. And he told them what to do, and they obeyed what he said. And the Bible said he turned water into wine. He's all right, isn't he? Hallelujah. This morning, thanks to God, I want to begin this series of preaching, talking about a man being drunk with this new wine. The wine that I want to talk about this morning is the wine of submission. This wine is a powerful wine, and this is a great wine, amen, to have, amen, in your cabinet, that you can reach in your refrigerator, wherever it may be. You must drink the wine of submission, this new wine. God's all right in you. He, the, you that have your Bible with you this morning, and we begin the latest foundation talking about this new wine, and talking about these eight different wines, amen, and one particular one this morning. If you turn with me, please, to the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 18, amen, and verse 20. It's the scriptures that we want to use this morning to lay this foundation. Hallelujah. Talking about a wine that's called submit. He's all right, isn't he? And we read in the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, and verse 18 down to verse 20, it reads and said, And be not drunk with wine wherein excess. But be filled with the Spirit, <clears throat> speaking to yourself in songs and hymns and spiritual songs, amen, songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always, amen, for all things unto God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Remember the scripture is telling us to be not amen, drunk with natural wine, but be drunk, amen, with the spiritual wine. The spiritual wine, in the sense of God, wants to control, will take control if you allow it. But, but I believe that God wants us to be fully drunk. Amen. He's all right in me. And today is the beginning of us, amen, starting, amen, amen, our process of getting drunk. And the first wine that we must drink is the wine of submit. He's all right, isn't he? So he told, as Paul was being led by the Holy Ghost in these scripture saints of God and sharing with you and I and even them at that time, I thank God for the word. How about you this morning? Remember, saints of God, let me lay this foundation naturally. And as I talk about this naturally, we want to bring it over into the spirit so you understand what God is asking of us in this day. Holy Ghost, have your way in this place. 
We know that with you, we can make it, and without you, we can do nothing. Truly, I do believe this morning that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Amen. He has sent me to heal the broken heart and to preach deliverance to the captain and to recover sight to the blind. Amen. And to preach to them that are bruised and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. He's all right, isn't he? Tell somebody, amen, that may be by you that you need to get drunk with me. And we need to get drunk in the Holy Ghost. He's all right, isn't it? We need to drink first this first, this first wine that I want to talk about, and that is the wine, praise the Lord, of submit. But first, let me define and talk about drunkenness so you understand what God is asking of you. Because somebody said, I, I, I don't drink. I, I don't drink no more. Amen. Man, I, when I begin to deal with this message, my mind went back. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. When I, I just love drinking that rum and that Citrus 7, whatever that stuff was, and a little vodka every now and then. But amen. And you know, you're drunk is slow. And, 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 and it was a slow process for it to take over. And this is the same way God wants to, amen, come into our lives, wants the Holy Ghost, amen, hallelujah, to work in us, through us, and out of us. Want us to become intoxicated with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, in the all right. Let's lay this foundation this morning naturally and move it into the spirit. The word drunkenness, saints of God, mean to be intoxicated with drink or drugs. In other words, you can be intoxicated with drinks or drugs. I, amen, know what both feel like. I have experienced it. I haven't always been this saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost, amen, filled man of God. He's all right in me. I know what it is to be intoxicated with drugs. I know what it is to be intoxicated with alcohol. Amen. Some of you may not have had that type of experience. You know, like my wife, she never even had a beer. Amen. He's all right, isn't it? I shouldn't be talking about her like that, preaching the word this moment, sir. But to the God be the glory. Amen. I don't know about you this morning, but amen. Remember, drunkenness, amen, could be with drink or drug. Amen. A person can be drunk off of either one. The word excess in here in scripture simply means excessive behavior. In other words, you know when you get under the influence of drugs or drink, amen, your behavior will change. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. So God want to change in our behavior sense of God. Isn't he all right? He said, amen. Man, if you drink these wine, this new wine, amen, that I have for you, your behavior will change. He's all right, isn't he? Hallelujah. The same way, amen, saints of God with the natural wine. Remember, the Bible says several things about drunkenness. It said, amen, saints of God, that drunkenness, amen, amen, will exclude you from the presence of the Lord. In other words, from God's kingdom. You see, he's all right in there. See, natural drunkenness will exclude you from entering into God's kingdom. According to the word of God, praise the Lord, in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 10. The Bible said, nor no thieves, nor covenant, nor drunkards, amen, shall inherit the kingdom of God. And he's very specific, that the saints of God. So I want you to take that natural side of drunkenness from the scripture, and I want you to reverse it, hallelujah, and think about it spiritually. And we're going to talk about it that way as we lay this foundation. He's all right in it. So if I'm drunk in the Holy Ghost, amen, hallelujah, it's going to get me closer and open those doors, amen, into the kingdom of me. But if I'm drunk of that natural wine, amen, remember he said, neither covenant nor thief nor drunken shall inherit God's kingdom. That's a natural drunk now, but a spiritual drunk, you can come in. Are y'all with me this morning? He also said in the book of Galatians, chapter 5 and verse 21, he said, envy, envy, murder, drunkards, amen, drunkenness, amen, and such, amen, of the which I tell you before, amen, as I have told you in time past, that they which do such things 
shall not inherit the kingdom of God. I bet you, you didn't know that, that so much was in the scriptures about drunkenness. Amen. He's all right in there. Amen. Isn't it awesome how God is showing us in his word, amen, how a natural drunk to a spiritual drunk. And what he offers a spiritual drunk, God's all right in there. And showing us the effects of a natural drunk is the same effects of a spiritual drunk. Please hang with me and come and drink some of this good wine with me this morning. Amen. I pray that I get drunk in the Holy Ghost. Amen. And that the preacher just begin to preach. He's all right, isn't he? So remember, drunkenness will, amen, have you, will cause you not to be, not to be able to enter into God's kingdom. And drunkenness, saints of God, will lead you to other forms of misbehavior, amen, and sin. You have to be careful when you get natural drunk. You do things and behave in some way sometimes that you're not even aware of yourself. And it will lead you to do things that you don't normally do. And it's the same thing in the spirit. It's what God has said. I hope y'all are with me this morning. Hallelujah. Get your coffee. Get your water. Get your cheese and eggs and whatever. We're going to have a time with this word this morning. I hear the Holy Ghost telling us, amen. It's time to get drunk. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost. It's time to drink some of this new wine. Isn't he all right? Remember, drunkenness will lead you, amen, to other forms of misbehavior and sin. The Bible said in the book of Ephesians, amen, the scripture that we read, amen, chapter 5 and verse 18, and be not drunken with wine, we're in excess. Remember that word excess, behavior, amen, but be filled with the spirit, but be filled. In other words, if you get filled with wine, it's going to take over and cause you to behave many different ways. But if you get filled with the Spirit, get drunk with the Spirit, it will do the same. Isn't he all right? But the outcome, amen, is totally different. So remember also, saints of God, as we talk about what the Scripture has to say about drunkenness, it's also said that drunkenness will make it impossible for you and I to grasp hold, amen, to the fading opportunity of time. In other words, time will go past us. We'll lose time. Amen. Don't know what time went. Amen. Don't know what we did in that time. Are y'all with me, church? This is what the scripture says, amen, in Ephesians 5 and 16, 18. It says, redeem in the time. Amen. Because the days are evil. In the all right. Amen. You won't be able to redeem no time. That time is gone. You done lost that time. I, remember, I lost time. Hallelujah. Amen. When I was under that influence, I lost time. Couldn't redeem it. Not realizing that time was fading away. And it could not be redeemed. I hope y'all are with me this morning. So wherefore, he said, be ye, amen, not unwise, but understanding, amen, what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk, amen, with wine but be drunk with the Holy Ghost, new wine. Are y'all with me? I'm talking about the wine of submit. In other words, saints of God, when you get enough of this good wine in you, amen, you, you, you can't do nothing but submit to it. That's why I'm calling it the wine of submit this morning. When this wine, amen, you get enough in, he's all right in me. The process might be slow of drinking it, but when it comes in and enough get in, it will take over. This is what the Lord has said to you and I, amen, that have the Holy Ghost. We must allow the Holy Ghost this new wine. We must get filled with it. God's all right in me that our behavior comes somewhat like the Holy Ghost in the all right. This morning, let me touch as we move forward talking about this. There's traits of drunk. Amen. Hallelujah. And the spirit-filled person, the spirit-filled person that is drunk under the, under the influence of the Holy Ghost, there's some traits that take place in their life. One of those traits, saints of God, a spiritual drunk person, amen, has a singing spirit, always want to sing. Hallelujah to God be the glory. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Uh, he's all right in 
Uh, remember what I said that a spiritual drunk person, uh, amen, have the singing spirit. Uh, this is saints of God in contracts, uh, amen, with a natural drunk person, uh, amen. But I got drunk all the way for the same day. Uh, Y'all don't hear me. And this is what the Bible is telling you and I. He's all right in me. You better get drunk, my brother. You better get drunk, my sister. And start singing again. Get me all right. Uh, a spiritual drunk person. Uh, one of their traits also, uh, they have a, thank, a, a thankful spirit. Uh, amen. You see, some folk get too drunk with natural wine, uh, and they become very thankful uh, about this and that. Uh, Y'all don't hear me? Uh, isn't he all right? Uh, mm, the saints of God, uh, you and I, we begin to thank him for all things, amen, no matter what thing they may be on, because we know that he's in control. I got to get drunk again, amen, this year. It may take me, amen, eight types of wine to drink, amen, to get fully drunk. I'm talking about the first one this morning, when that drunkness begin to come. We begin to submit. This is the wine of submit this morning. He's all right, isn't he? Isn't he all right? You see, a spiritual drunk person has a submissive spirit, amen, and a respectful spirit, amen, at times. God's all right, isn't he? A spirit filled person, saints of God, has not a spirit of criticizing, nor, amen, nor divisive. Uh, nor selfishness. Uh, he or she has a spirit uh, of submission. Uh, in the all right. Uh, bring in this new wine of the Holy Ghost. Uh, you see, the same is true uh, in the church saints of God. Uh, universal faith church. Uh, let us get drunk again. Uh, we become too sober-minded. Uh, we're too much in control. Uh, amen of our lives of our bodies, y'all don't hear me, of our thinking, tell somebody it's time to get drunk again in the Holy Ghost, I got to try the eight new wines that I heard about, God's all right in me, yes he is, one of the roles, saints of God, a man of the Holy Ghost, was to bring a level of behavior of control through the process of being filled. He's all right in me. In other words, allow the Holy Ghost to work in you, through you and out of you. This new line, you see the fullness of the Holy Ghost, saints of God, we experience all of what God intends for us, amen, which occurs when we are drunk in the Holy Ghost. If you're not drunk in the Holy Ghost, you will not experience all that God has for you. If you don't submit, amen, and drink this wine of submission, you're going to have a problem. He's all right in me. Let it take over. God's all right in me. Remember, saints of God, drunk in the Holy Ghost, being drunk with the Holy Ghost is a continuing process. It's not a one-time, single-time drunk. Y'all don't hear me? It's not a one-time drink. We got the Holy Ghost in 1978. You got to drink it again. Y'all don't hear me? They got it on the day of Pentecost. They came back to the chapter later. Had to get it again. Had to get drunk again. Had to come under the influence. Had to become submissive to the Holy Ghost. It'd be all right. It's not a one-time drink. This drink. You got to drink this drink today. This new wine. This wine that I call Submit. Isn't he all right? Stop fighting the Holy Ghost. Let it take over. Let it rule. Let it work in you. Let it use you. Let it speak through you. Isn't he all right? I got to get 
get drunk again in the Holy Ghost. I want to sing again. I want to dance again. Y'all don't hear me, church. Being fully drunk. With the new wine we will have, you and I will submit, amen, to the Spirit of God like never before. Remember, drunk with this new wine. Unfortunately, thanks to God and you that are with me this morning. Many believers never experienced the fullness, amen, of the Holy Ghost, amen, because they never fully, amen, or never followed through with the process, amen, of being fully drunk, amen, in the spirit. He's all right, isn't he? When the spirit coming off of your drink, don't turn it away. Y'all don't hear me. I watch my Western movies, and sometimes that old bad cowboy of going to bar and off a man a drink. And if the man won't take the drink with him, he said, You won't drink with me? And throw it in his face. And he stepped back, amen, ready to draw. Y'all don't hear me. It's time to accept, amen, that drink that has been offered you, amen, by the Holy Ghost. And this morning is the drink of submission. Isn't he all right? Isn't he all right? We got to get drunk, Universal Faith Church, like never before. Somebody said, why? Because again, saints of God, amen, they looked at it, and many of us look at it, talking about being drunk at one single event, amen, he's all right in me, but being drunk is a process that one goes through. Mm, in the all right, you got to sit down and begin to drink it slowly, and it slowly take over. It just don't take over instantly. It's a process in submitting, amen, and drinking this new wine called submit. God's all right in me. In the all right, oh God, this morning, today, Hallelujah. Fill us with this new wine of submission. Fill us, Lord. God's all right in me. You told us in your word, as Paul said, be ye not drunk with wine, we're in excess, but be filled with the Spirit, just as wine control the influence and influence the flesh when it become, he or she become drunk, amen, with alcohol, the Holy Ghost do the same, he will control and influence our spirit, amen. When we become drunk in the Holy Ghost, in the all right, in the all wrong. I've been drunk on the influence of wine. I'm talking about natural wine. I've been drunk on the influence of the spiritual wine. That's what I want this morning. I want some more of this wine. I will fall out. Amen. And don't have no control. Let this wine take over. I want to submit to this wine. Let me be all right. This good wine. The new wine that the Bible calls it. God's all right, isn't it? Isn't he all right? Somebody. Hallelujah. You got to get drunk again, my brother. You got to get drunk again. Amen, my sister. You're too sober minded. Amen, everything is your way. Everything is how you feel. You're too much in control of your hand, of your feet. Of your eyes, of your mind, your intellect is in the way. Lose control. Let this new wine of submission, the Holy Ghost wine, 
let him take over. When drunk, when drunk, saints of God, y'all don't hear me this morning. When you're drunk, it changes your behavior. It changes your mind. It changes your attitude so that you and I, we walk not after the flesh, amen, but after the spirit. I'm talking about being drunk in the Holy Ghost. It will change your mind. It will change your behavior. The same way a natural drunk, it'll change their behavior. It changed their mind. It changed their attitude. God's all right, isn't it? Remember what Jesus said in Matthew, neither do men put new wine, follow me in church, neither do men put new wine into old bottles, amen, either the bottle breaks, amen, and the wine runs out, and the bottle perish. But, the, but they put a new wine into new bottles. Amen. And both amen, saints of God. Amen. All preserved. What is he talking about here, church? You see the bottle with the wine skin of that day, saints of God, fashioned out of animal skin. Are y'all with me this morning? I'm talking about our bodies. He was talking about our bodies. He was talking about what we let come in uh, that old wine or that new wine, uh, which form of control, that old control or this new control. Uh, I'm talking about the Holy Ghost, uh, not witchcraft control, uh, but the Holy Ghost. Uh, he's all right in me. Uh, you see, if you put new wine uh, into new wine skin, uh, it would expand. Uh, you got to understand this, uh, the process that Jesus was explaining, uh, that if you took new wine uh, and put it into new wine skin. It will expand in the all right. But if you put new wine into old wine skin, amen to God, it would burst because, because it had already been expanded, amen, by the old wine in the all right and had no room for expansion. Saints of God, spiritually, you see, the old wine, amen, and the old wine skin is nothing but sin of the world and of our flesh. It has already been shaped and formed by this world and controlled us, amen, through wicked drunkenness. But there's a change in our life. Look what he was telling them, amen, about drinking this new wine and putting this new wine, amen, into a vessel. God's all right in me. It had already been shaped and formed. You and I was already shaped and formed before we came to the Lord. We had that old wine in this old vessel that had been stretched, amen, in all kind of ways out here in the world. Are y'all with me, saying? of God, but God says he gives us the new wine of the Holy Ghost in, in the all right if we try to put it into our old wine skin. That's why you got to change this old body. I'm about to get ahead of myself here, but I got to stay on course. In the all right, this old fleshly wine skin, amen, it will burst. You can't take this new wine and put it into old, this old wine skin. So you and I, we need a new wine skin, a new body to hold this new holy wine so that we can become spiritually drunk, controlled by the Holy Ghost. Y'all don't hear me this morning in the all right. That's why we got to be what is called new creatures. Hallelujah in the all right. Going down in the water in Jesus' name. Coming up a new creature. God's all right in this new body. Amen. Coming out of the water. Don't repent. 
born again. Amen. It can now hold this new wine. It can now stretch. But you cannot take that old wine and put it in the new. It will not accept it. God's all right in me. And I'm here to tell you your old ways, old ways of thinking, old ways of living, old ways of doing. It cannot, saints of God, come into this new wineskin. I'm all right. God's all right in me. Saints of God, remember what the Bible tells you and I. Remember spiritual drunkenness. Saints of God, when we become spiritually drunk, we get a new walk, we get a new look, and we have a new talk. Y'all don't hear me. I remember being drunk. Amen. My talk changed. My walk changed. Y'all don't hear me. And my look changed. Yeah. 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 I'm talking about a spiritual drunk. Amen. In the all right. Are y'all with me this morning? Y'all give me a little more time this morning talking about this spiritual drunk. Amen. Drinking this new wine this morning. Amen. A spiritual drunk. Amen. Has a new walk, a new look, and a new talk. You know, God's all right in me. Yeah, let's talk about the first one a little bit. Becoming drunk with a new walk. The Bible said in Ephesians 5 and 15, see that ye walk, amen, circumspectly, not as fools, but as wives. In the all right, in the all right, you got to walk, amen, saints of God, the walk of old wives. You can't walk the old walk no more. The walk of old wine. Amen. You got to walk in the new wine now. You got to let it lead in God now. The walk of the old wine. Our flesh and the lust of this world. Saints of God is unacceptable. Amen. It's an unacceptable walk. Amen. A walk just like a drunk man. God's all right in me. That's why we got to get this new walk, this new walk, amen, coming from this new drink, this new wine, this wine of submission. God's all right in me. He's in a hurry. Amen. Stumbling. Amen. Around saints of God. Amen. With nowhere to go. Amen. A new walk. We got to get a new walk. We can't be stumbling around. Amen. Don't know where we're going. Amen. Don't know just stumbling. Y'all don't hear me this morning, saints of God. We got to get rid of that old walk and get this new walk. Amen. Don't be in such a hurry. But the Bible said in Ephesians 2 and 2, where in time past, we walk according to the course of this world. Amen. But this, 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 this new drunk that I get now, amen, I'm walking not according to, amen, that old drunk, but I'm walking now according to this new drunk. Amen. I used to walk, like the scripture said, according to this world. And this world says, but with this new, with this new wine, this wine of submission, it gives me a new walk in the all right. Let me say, we're in time past, he walked according to the course of this world. You was on his influence, but now we're on a totally different influence. According to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the church, amen, of disobedience. I don't know about you, but I used to walk under that influence. No more. I get drunk now, and I'm walking under a different influence. Isn't the all right? I got a new walk. I'm not stumbling. Amen. This, 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 this drunk won't work. Amen. I won't stumble under with this drunk. Amen. I won't stumble. No walk. I won't stumble with this drunk. He's all right. Is there anybody going to get drunk today? I know you shut up in your house. Amen. Don't get drunk off the communion wine. I'm talking about the Holy Ghost. He's all right. In. The Holy Ghost. In the all right. It is a, it, it is a, <laughs> praise the Lord. 
It is a drunken walk that is contrary to the will of God. Amen. For your life. In other words, as David, remember what David said. David said, and David implied when he said, amen, that he was shaped in iniquity and conceived in sin. He was saying that his 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 breathing, amen, and his and 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 and, and nature was based thanks to God upon wrath, wickedness, and bitterness and evil. He was saying, that's how I came into the world, that drip was driven by, amen, an uncontrollable desire of the flesh, conceived in sin, said, amen. Are y'all with me? For the lust of the flesh, of the eye, and the pride of life, David said, that's how we can see. Amen. My father was drunk. <laughs> you don't remember each other. He knew he was drunk on the influence of this. It'll be all right. The new wine of the Holy Ghost, it gives us a new walk. See that you walk circumspectly, not as food, but as wild. The Holy Spirit keeps us from being a fool drunk. See, the Holy Ghost don't want us. The Holy Ghost don't make us a fool drunk. Now, you may not know what a fool drunk is. I ain't got time to deal with no fool drunk this moment. A fool drunk. You don't see some fools out there drunk. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about somebody you don't know. A fool drunk. I think I've been a fool drunk a time or two. Isn't he all right, Chuck? See, see, he's saying, see, he's all right. He said, not, a, not as food drunk, but, but as a wild drunk. I said, a wild drunk, but a wild drunk. The Holy Spirit saints in God, it keeps us from being a food drunk, amen, of our flesh. But a wild drunk with the Spirit. I ain't gonna be no food drunk. I need some wild drunkards this morning. I need us to get together on the corner and bring our bottle. I'm talking about our bottle of submissive wine, new wine. They ain't even got it on the shelf yet. Walmart don't carry. ABC store don't carry. <laughs> He's all right. I, I, I do know a place that carries this wine. He's all right. I ain't gonna be before you too much longer, but I know a place that carries this wine. Number two, saints of God. When we come under the influence of this wine, amen. Man, we get that new walk and we get a new look. We become drunk with a new look. See, when you get drunk under the influence, your look changes. When you get naturally drunk, your look will change. Your clothes won't even be fitting you right no more. Because you don't even know that. Maybe you hang it off and buttoned up wrong and then went to the bathroom, simple, still open and shoot. Y'all don't hear that? <laughs> A fool drunk. I hear the Holy Ghost said, I want you to get drunk, church. But there's no one. Get a new look, as Jesus said in Matthew 9 and 16. He said, no man, amen, put a piece of new cloth, amen, into old garment. No man take that and put it into a new piece, uh, take a new piece and put it into old garment. No, he don't do it. Follow what Jesus is saying. For that which is put, amen, is to fit it up, take it from the garment. You put that new piece on that old garment and take it from it. Hallelujah. He's all right, isn't he? And I'm wearing an appearance. It's not going to look the same. It ain't going to look right. It looked like somebody got a problem. Put that new piece on that old piece. That's what he's saying. A new look. And the rent is made worse. In other words, the look become worse. Isn't he all right? See, the look of the old wine is the look that comes from ungodliness and sin and wickedness. Just as the person looks fall the part when they are in amen, when they're in a 
a contrary state of drunkenness. You see, the continents and everything changes. The look changes. You, I hope you hear what God's telling us out of his word. In the aura, it changes. State of drunkenness, state of drunkenness. So it in which, amen, the wine of sin and wickedness of our flesh takes over. And it changed our look. In the all right. Jesus said, I haven't come, amen, to sow, amen, patches on old garments. That's what he was saying. I didn't come to sow patches on old garments. Please follow me. I'm about to close. I won't be here too much longer. He said, I didn't come to, to sow patches on old garments. I come to get you drunk. Now, that, that's what that's a saying there in I didn't come to sow patches on old garments. I didn't come to take new wine and put it into old wine skin so the old wine skin can't hold it. Your own life can't hold the Holy Ghost. Your old lifestyle can't handle, can't, can't handle this new look that, 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 that the Holy Ghost wants to bring about in your life. You can't hold can handle it. That's what he said in both of these scriptures. I hope y'all are with me now. As the Holy Ghost slow me down to teach this, get this in your spirit. In the all right, he said, look here, in other words, you can't take the new wine of the Holy Ghost and cover up the old garments of sin of the flesh. Remember the new wine, saints of God, from the Holy Spirit gives us a new look. A new look. I ain't talking about Amen. So, so your sleeves got to be all the way down there, and you can't wear no whole lot of shoes. I hope y'all remember that. Ain't talking about that kind of look. Ain't talking about you can't wear no earballs and a little makeup. No! That ain't what he's talking about. But that's what some folks have been taught. Even I was taught that to a degree one time. Are y'all with me, church? When we get drunk with the Holy Ghost, we don't, he won't care. He, he, see, remember, when we get drunk with the Holy Ghost, he doesn't, amen, just cover our wickedness or our wicked heart, but he creates, amen, in us a clean heart. What does he do? He creates in you and I what? A clean heart. David said, amen, in Psalm 51 and 50, created me a clean heart, O God. And renew a right spirit within me. I'm tired of drinking that bad wine. I want some of that right wine. Y'all know this. <laughs> a right spirit within me. In the old run. When you become drunk with the Holy Ghost, you don't cover up. Amen. You don't cover. Amen. He doesn't cover you up. He cleans you up. In the all right, he doesn't, amen, fit the old, amen, you. He creates a new you. He don't fix the old you, but create a new you. Remember, the Bible said we're what? New creatures in Christ Jesus. All things are passed away. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a what? A new creature. All things have passed away, and behold, all things become a man new. In the all right, so he doesn't create a man, oh, he makes you new so you can handle that new wine, the new wine skin, the new body can handle the Holy Ghost. In the all right, last but least, thanks of God, amen. Talking about that new look. Remember becoming drunk, amen, in the Holy Ghost, give you a new talk. Remember what he said in Ephesians 5 and 19. Speaking to yourself, a new talk, a new talk. Speaking to yourself. Remember, the Bible also said our conversation once was. I don't talk like that no more. A new speech. When I got drunk, I cuss anybody out. When I got drunk, I thought I was a playboy. Let's move on. 
talk to anybody. Y'all over here. He gave you some bone this day. Yes, it did. Becoming drunk with a new talk. I'm closing now. He said, speaking to yourself. Speaking to yourself. Speak to yourself. You know how you get drunk. You want to remember other people coming in. Who are you talking to? What's she talking to? Talking to themselves. <laughs> Y'all with me? Let's get drunk this morning, Universal Faith. Speaking to ourselves with a new talk. Speaking to yourself in songs and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. That's the drunk we want. Oh, the Lord is good, and the Lord is great. Yeah, you may know that. That's what you said. I'm wrong with you. I'm wrong with you. Are y'all with the church? I'm closing now. Remember, saints of God, in all of this that we shared with you this morning, when we're drunk with the Spirit, we get a new talk. Amen. I'm sorry, we get a new walk that on our steps and lead us in the path of righteousness. When we're drunk in the spirit, we get a new look in which we no longer cover up. We clean up. God doesn't fix the old you. As we said, he creates a new you. And finally, this morning, we get a new talk. <laughs> That overcomes our doubts and fears with faith and praise. The talk of old wine is a talk of defeat. The talk of old wine is a talk of doubt. The talk of old wine is a talk of disbelief. A talk of old wine is a talk of fear. A talk of old wine. When the flesh is drunk, the worst comes out. Cursing, anger, bitterness, amen, and hurt. But the new wine of the Holy Ghost gives us a new talk. Speaking to ourselves in songs and hymns and spiritual songs, giving thanks always for all things unto God. This morning, church, when you and I are filled with the Holy Ghost, we are drunk with a new song. Oh, sing unto the Lord a new song, David said. Sing unto the Lord all year. Remember this wine of submission. Submit to the Holy Ghost. And letting this wine, and that's what this wine is in the aura. When you take a hot blood pill, it's for hot blood. This is wine is for submission. The next wine come and see us. Next week, and we'll talk about that. This is the Apostle God. Let us pray. Lord, I pray this morning for the saints. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for the saints of the Most High. I pray for those that have tuned in with us this morning. I pray for healing in the bodies of those that are having issues and conditions and problems in their bodies right now. I speak healing by the stripes of Jesus Christ from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. Entirely, I pray for the entire family. I come in with Jesus' blood. I pray healing for the families right now. For those with those muscle problems right now, I speak healing to your body right now. Amen with the headache. I speak healing to your body right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. That one right now, you, you got decisions to make, said the Holy Ghost. I pray, amen, that you make the decision under the influence. Get drunk with the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Those that have an eye, amen, your eyes hurt. Heal in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father. We give you praise and we give you the glory and give you the honor. Hey, I'm looking for a miracle. How about you? This has been Universal Faith Church. Apostle Thomas, Sister Thomas, we thank you. 
Amen for being with us. If you want to be a blessing to us, remember, amen, we have Cash App, Universal Faith Church. If we have, amen, a PayPal account, Universal Faith Church, amen, 20 at gmail.com. God bless you. Amen. Look forward to seeing you at Bible study. Amen. This Wednesday. You have a great day in the Lord. Hallelujah.